Greetings from London. This is Mariam Shreve and welcome to the Star Moguls podcast. This week, I'm joined by a very special guest for our International Women's Day series. Her name is Fatma El Sharavi, and I've had the privilege to work with her. She is the CEO and founder of The Gracious F, and I welcome Fatima. Thank you very much, and thank you. It's so nice to see you after so long, Maria. Absolutely. I was just thinking to myself, when is the last time I actually saw Fatima? And it was in 2018, and we did the Ramadan campaign together, which was amazing. It was such a great privilege. I really enjoyed that, and I learned so much. So much fun, and it was yes, like, it was it was a very was. colorful campaign, actually. <laughs> it was. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. So we're going to talk about color and creativity and how people should understand color for uh, personally and professionally because we both love color. We understand color, but we want to help women, especially, but our audience understand the concept of color and what is a a color consultancy. You know, how does it help the uh, a normal individual or a business. So um, let's start off with the uh, the color of the year with Pantone. This year, Pantone has uh, created the color of the year called Very Peri. I'm actually wearing it now. What do you think of Very Peri and how can we use this color in our daily lives or in business? Well, that's an interesting color um, that they have transitioned to actually for this year. Uh, because last year, uh, if uh, it was for the first time, they had chosen two colors for Pantone yes. Color of the Year, yes. which, uh, which was quite interesting for me. And I do agree, w- the colors that they chose was the mental state of the people. You know, it was yes. the transitioning from isolation to creativity and moving on. Mm. And this year, the color, I would say, because the color is sort of in between a blue and a purple. Yes. So it's interesting, um, the elements and the meanings of these two colors, actually. Mm. So the purple represents a lot of the spirituality and healing, which is exactly what everybody is doing now after yes. these two years of the pandemic. Another aspect of it, the blue um, sort of um, is our expression of how very focused we are about starting our new beginning, focused about the direction we want to take now that everything um, is slowly going back to normal. A lot of people went through a personal and business transition, which their directions changed in life. So right now they're very focused on going on their new path. So uh, this is the combination and the meaning of the color of the year that I see resonates very much with the state of mind globally. And how do you think we can incorporate this color into our lives. So I'm wearing it now because I remember having a shit long time ago and I actually love it. I actually love this color. It is quite vibrant. Um, it is, it does make me, it does uh, complement my personality. I feel that it does give me a bit of a lift and colors have a great way of ex- not just expression, but there is a, a frequency in, in colors which people don't understand. Can you and tell us a little bit more about um, how colors actually impact our mental health? Yes, so it's very important to know one thing that all colors are good colors because a lot of people come up and tell me, okay, which is a bad color I should avoid? And I'm like, there are no bad colors. It's just the proportion that you use it in. So each color has a positive and negative side. So when you exceed using the color, it starts taking a negative effect on you. And um, with the purple and the blue, as I said, the combination, um, it kind of gives you a sense, uh, the positive, of course, that it would be healing, it would be focusing, but then if you exceed it, the purple uh, is an indication that you are in depression if you're constantly wearing this color. Mm-hmm. And with the blue, it's the same thing. If you're constantly wearing blue, then you will feel isolated and you'll isolate people from you. So a a good example of actually this exact color you're wearing is um, a lot of people who are, for example, in finance and accounting are very much attracted to very strong blue. And you Mm. see them transition into a lighter blue when they come out of work. But their sense of communication is very cold because they're exceeding this the use of this color Mm. and you see that in characteristics of people you know in certain fields that's because there's a color that's very dominant in their environment 
in how they are attracted or the mood they're in. So here's where we transition into how do we heal with color. Uh, but before we get into how do we heal with color, you ask how do you use? I mean, this color. Yeah, is how do we? Strong. And, and how would you use it? And yeah. for example, like I like a lighter blue. So for me, this color would be very strong and it wouldn't go actually with my color personality. Yeah. So uh, here's where we have um, the hue of the color, the vibration of the color and how yes. do you use it? So for example, somebody like in, it, this is a color that's in your palette. And as you said, you feel comfortable, you feel energetic wearing it. But say somebody who doesn't have this color in their palette, how would they use it? It could be uh, in small portions. So it yes. can be an accessory, an earring, a belt, bag, bag shoes. Yeah. Um, in their interior, it could be maybe a cushion or a vase. Um, even on their desk, actually, if they love this color, it can be sort of an accessory or even like a candle with this color. You know, so there are many alternatives to how you can use a color. Um, now, here's when we go into the healing aspect of it. Um, yes. It's very important. And this is actually what I gave a guide to everyone during 2020 and 2021. We have to use our primary psychology colors. This is what controls basically our mood. This is how we can um, transition from uh, one state of mind that may be causing you to be aggressive or maybe um, takes you out of an isolating state is basically to make sure that you use it in the right situation. Mm. So the primary psychology colors are red, blue, green, and yellow. Right. So how do we use this during our day? So basically red is a physical color, something that gives you energy. So you'd use it for working out, uh, you would use it for anything that has like physical um, activities and mm -hmm. great for moms who wake up very drained and have to go <laughs> through the whole day with those screaming kids. Red is your color to like lift your energy up. Right. Because they, you know, you're running around and everything. You have a lot of physical activity. Yeah. You have to do. Um, then we have the color yellow, which is more of um, a friendly color. So this is mm -hmm. a color you wear, for example, when you're socializing or even if you're working, but your work is very creative. So this kind of stimulates you, you know, to get in this very fun, light mood. Mm. Then we go into the blue, which is very good for focus. So this primarily, you would use it for either work or you would use it, for example, you're a college student or, or, or even at school, you would use the blue while you're studying to focus or while you're doing a project to focus. Um, but after that, of course, when you've concentrated so much, you need to transition into something that kind of cuts that mood off. This is where you go into your green. So the green gives you a sense of balance, relaxation. So if you use these colors during your day and transition into them, you will feel balanced. You will not feel exhausted. You will not feel depressed. You will not yes. feel isolated because you see, for a person, structure is very important for your mental state of mind. And yes. these colors make you create structure in your life. Overall, so during the pandemic, we obviously had no structure. We had no clue what was going on in the world. We were trying to still determine where business and where life and relationships were. Yes. And so I suggest to everybody at least get dressed for the day. Because when you get dressed, you feel like you're you're prepared and you're you you have to have a starting point to yeah. the day. And if you don't start the day with, with yourself, how, how, like, again, it needs to give you structure. How did you feel during the last two years? And how, how have colors helped you? Oh, colors have really helped me during this time, because honestly, uh, to me, the, my, actually, it's interesting, my career and work transition was not I wasn't panicking at all. And I was shocked at myself. I was like, <laughs> am I okay? Or am you're, I very calm. you're very calm. You're very calm. But generally, I was like, am, am I like, um, am I so shocked with what's happening that I've suddenly gone on a numb state, you know? Right. Uh, because it was very confusing. It was very calm. Even my, my team, like some of them were like losing their mind. And I was like, everything's going to be okay. I'm telling you, everything's going to be okay. And it was. 
because yeah. you see, I had already made the structure. Yes. So, um, but how it helped me was actually, as you said, like at the beginning, I would say the first two weeks, everybody was basically in their pajamas working mm -hmm. online. Okay. And then you then I remember everybody complaining by the third week that you had either gone into a slum or you had been blocked creatively. Um, and then some people went into deep depression, like I cannot live in this state yes. for, for God knows when, because at that point in time, we didn't even have a deadline. They didn't yeah. even, we didn't know was it going to be two or three years, you know, yes. and nobody had a clue. So here's where I, I started fully using these primary psychology colors. So as you said, I would wake up, yeah. I would dress like I was going to go to the office. Yes, exactly. Okay? And then uh, what I did is also with my space, I would get out of my room and being on the couch and working. You know, I would mm. um, dress up. I would go, for example, in the dining room and sit and work. You know, I would go to another room. So I would change my space. And as I changed, of course, the colors were changing around me. Um, and then I started being creative with my workspace. I started using yes. different colors that I would be looking at during the day around my desk that would stimulate uh, my mood. So, um, and then I took like actually a small section of a majlis we have outside. And mm -hmm. I actually made it my creative because we're doing a lot of videos. So this is where I created my background, you know, oh, I was like, I'm like, okay, I need to represent my work visually. Yes. How do I do that? You know? So that's where I'm like, okay, you know, I have a wall, I have lovely colors and paintings. Let's do this. And now this has become my signature. Everybody's like, oh, the girl with the colored background. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a great opportunity to be creative with your work oh, and yes, yourself. For sure. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, I was very creative, honestly. And, yeah. uh, and there was a lot of things that uh, with the fast pace of life, I had just completely forgotten about what made me happy or what did I enjoy doing. Yes. And I love painting. And I had probably stopped painting for a good, like, I don't know, 10 years or something. Wow. I didn't and I actually did. picked it up again. Oh, and wow. I, I picked it up again and, I, and it was so therapeutic. I oh, swear, yes. every night I would just sit there and just color and paint and, yeah. and I enjoyed it. And that's why I feel I came back to the element of who my real self was, you know, yes. due to the yeah. sensations. What would you say to someone who has that block uh, of creativity? What do they need to do to unblock using colors and using their space? Well, number one, I would definitely tell them to do a color session because they, <laughs> they would then, uh, and no advertisement here, but truly, <laughs> you need uh, to do a color analysis because that truly tells you, uh, first of all, your characteristics and your strength. Mm. You understand yourself more yes. and also how to communicate with people because as you said, due to this digital era, there's there's a bit of like an abnormal um you know connection with people yeah so like yes. okay some people are adaptable and comfortable and talking online some people this is not how they communicate yes and they're yes. very uncomfortable so here's where uh you from the color session you get a guide of exactly when do you use these colors how do you use these colors how do you um use it creatively uh, in the process of whether it's your styling or whether it's your interior for your energy to balance. Um, also in terms of uh, creativity. Now here, honestly, I saw like ultimate creativity when it came to even creating brands during the pandemic. Yes, like, absolutely. Like, for man. example, like uh, yeah. Like, honestly, the, the most fascinating brand to me now, uh, which they leveraged what was going on, was the giving movement. And they use color, yeah. basically. Exactly. To, to you know, like, um, enhance people. Because, yes. first of all, they looked at the design element where people weren't going out. Everybody was buying lounge clothes. Second, yes. they look at the color aspect where 
you know, they were lifting up people's moods by having mm. such attractive colors. And then the, the third element was they were looking at it socially where they were giving back, they were supporting. And, and they were even thinking internally that how to source because a lot of the fashion industry, a lot of things are outsourced. So it made designers think, how can I be creative with the resources I have? And then yes. that now has become actually cost efficient and a long term thing they're applying. Yes, uh, sustainability, of yeah. course. And they're looking at so many different aspects. And I think it, you're forced to, to create opportunities and look for solutions, I think, that you know, exactly. that you probably would not have seen or probably overlooked. And and it really makes you kind of look at your company, look at yourself again and see where are you heading, you know, which direction. And and if it wasn't for that, I always think there's a blessing in everything. So I think it gave everybody an opportunity to just take a breath and understand who they are and where they want to go in life. Exactly. So how did you start all of this color consultancy off? Because like, it's not very common. When I came to, and worked with you, it wasn't very common. It wasn't an understanding that everybody has of color. It's not like it's a um, accountancy or law. Uh, you know, it, it's not one of the traditional routes that somebody would take. And I loved working with you because I completely understood the format and the work. How did you start this path? Well, it's interesting. I, you see, first of all, I'll um, sort of explain my educational background. That kind of will give you a better understanding of yes. how the company kind of was created. So uh, my first degree was sociology and marketing. And the reason for that is that I always loved reading people. I have a very strong intu intuition. So yes. I always used to observe like people, their behavior, their, why they did certain, yes. you know, actions and things like that. And then color was very dominant in my childhood because I used, as I told you, I used to paint. So color like, and painting was always my escape in my environment. And, and I was very sensitive as a, an empath. So sometimes my environment, it could be a simple thing, but I would get overwhelmed because I was feeling everybody's, you know, emotion. Energy, yes, yes. Yeah, so as a child, you don't know how to process this. Mm. And of course, at the time, like growing up, you know, nobody knew anything about being an empath or understanding yes. all this energy. Exactly. So it was very overwhelming. So I used to actually use that as my escape. So when I went to college, uh, like uh, I had to... Uh, study something in business in our era. <laughs> as we do as my generation I, I knew I wanted to be a fashion designer I think when I came out of my mother's womb and and that's all I talked about even my high school friends were like uh, are you serious I'm like you will see I'm going to be a designer one day I I mean I went into fashion but a different uh, aspect of it as, yeah yeah so because being uh, an Emirati woman being yeah. in the UAE uh, yeah. it was, it's not very common, was it? So having that no, kind of sense of it. ambition to do something completely different from away from everybody else rather than doing the academic fields, that's quite brave, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, completely. Because both my families are uh, like my mother's family are all doctors and my father's <laughs> family are all into business and real estate. So right. there's no creative bone except me. <laughs> <laughs> So you wanted to go to university and decided yes. you went to Washington, actually, yeah, in D.C., so, right? Exactly. So this is where um, I had to compromise. So I, so I picked business, but I wanted <laughs> something creative. So I went into marketing. And that's actually the first kind of area where I started learning a lot about like color and subliminal oh. messages and advertising and yes. all of this. And a lot of it was color, what they yes. used to to you know, mindset and the trend. And, and can we just tell the audience that color is used to impact and influence us always. It's been around in companies and in marketing for absolutely years, but we have never really understood it, have yeah. we? But only no. now, only now, really have we have, so have those conversations about branding and marketing, but really color has been at the forefront in, in marketing and branding. Oh, yes. Honestly, the 80s. And I was very happy that I actually went and studied in the U.S. because yes. the U.S. 
was one of the first, and that is also where the foundation of color psychology started. Mm. So they yes. have been using color psychology since like the 60s or 50s also. Yes. Actually. And they have been using color in advertising in a huge way. So mm. uh, so you, you can see a lot of it. Like actually like one of the projects and marketing we had to do of was Pepsi. And it was, uh, it was, we actually had to research back and we saw that how like the, the war of like Pepsi and Coca-Cola and it, and it came down to the colors. You see yes, why, why yes. one was more popular than the other. They actually even did tests of the ingredients being the same, but people would go towards the, the colored one. Yes, so here's yes. where like I, I just knew color was playing a big role. And a very honestly solid fact is that 80% of our behavior or how our mood is, is unconscious. So literally only 20% of decisions you're making about color or how you feel is conscious. So Mm -hmm. this shows how profound, basically, these colors are like maneuvering your day. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So here's here's like where I started with that. And then um, I did my second degree in... um, in London College of Fashion, which finally I did do fashion. (laughs) (laughs) You had to prove to your family that you had to do something else first, like everybody, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, so yeah, so I said my first one is for you, (laughs) it's for you. (laughs) So so here's where I was introduced to color psychology. Yeah, and London being one of the most like brilliant fashion capitals, which is so experimental. Exactly. And their fashion is all based on art. And yes. this is why color plays a big role in it. So uh, so this is where like I, I was introduced and I was really lucky to actually be taught by Angela Wright, who created the color effects theory. And day one from class, I knew my calling. I was like, this is what I have to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. And, um, and through the process, I was fascinated with the theory I was fascinated how much it could be applied in every Mm. industry I was actually even fascinated with my with the students how when we were testing on each other the change I would see in like literally a split second yeah and uh and then the change that happened to me because yes how did you change as a person by studying color and design and fashion Oh, I changed 180 degree <laughs> as a person when I applied the color of exterior because mm. at that time I was going through a very hard time. Uh, my mother had passed away the year before oh, and, um, and I didn't deal with my grief in facing my grief. I just right. locked it up and I took care of everyone around me and I just focused that I just have to work on what's the next thing and I wouldn't deal with it. So right. interesting about the color was that uh, the first three, four days of class, um, I didn't know that I was wearing purple most of right. the time. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. And Angela actually came up to me and she was like, dear, are you depressed or have you gone through a trauma? And I was yeah. like, is this woman psychic? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know? Picked yeah. it up. And Don't I, you kind of, yeah, of course. Yeah, Don't and I'm like, of... uh, yes, but uh, uh, how do you know that? And she's like, uh, she's like, I need you to stop wearing purple. She's like, you're in deep depression and you need to heal. So then she gave me like some colors to transition into. And then mm. I was very conscious, of course, of what I was wearing well, for yes, the rest exactly. of the semester. So that kind of actually uh, opened your mind, I guess. Opened really. my mind and no, yeah. and actually healed me. I start feeling less heavy, less, you know, yes. like choked and less closed yeah. in myself. Um, and then when I came back, because I had seen the transition into my my own life, I was like, I have to share this with people. I'm sure there are a thousand people going through what I'm going yes. through. And it's so simple. Like, it's such a simple thing to do. And, you know, you don't have to have this anxiety of any more, like, being stuck in a situation or even anxiety of communicating with people because you totally can influence, you know, your communication with the person. So at that time, I came, I did the whole analysis of the market that what's missing. So number one, as a customer, I wasn't Mm. too happy with the luxury brand service. So um, I was like, I want to go into retail. I want to transform. 
So this is where I started working with the luxury brands. You right. Know? Okay. I started making them understand that first of all, now there's so much information out there. Your customer is no longer somebody who will just look at an advertisement and buy the product or a celebrity yeah. order. They know. They they yes. know everything about it. They know exactly where it's manufactured how um, each one now also style wise people starting b- becoming very individualized in their style so yeah. it was no longer the massive trend each one was taking the trend and giving it their own twist so yes. here's where really know, creating like kind of that brand experience isn't it yes. yeah so this is where we like got into the brand experience they did one or two and then they saw the transformation of the response mm. of the people and this is where my my corporate work uh, you know, started. But initially, yes. it was very small. I was just doing a one-on-one personal mm. branding, which the word of mouth went crazy with everyone tried it. Yeah. So once I did that, once I did the corporate, then there was a solid understanding because I also did a sort of a year and a half of actually PR going on um, TV, doing magazines, explaining and yes. educating people about it. Exactly. So that's why now it has become a norm. People, you say color psychology, they're like, ah, oh, it means this and this and this because yes. there's so much information exactly. that I give out, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's how I got into it, honestly. Yeah. And w- when we um, worked together, you said something which was, I, I couldn't believe it at the time. And you were saying, actually, I don't like speaking, Maria. You know, we, we had to do this presentation and for a couple yeah. of days and, I was, and you said, Mariam, I don't like speaking. Actually, I don't like it at all. But you used colors to help you in your presentations. Can you explain a little bit about that? So it could help yeah. other people also. Yes. So actually, this is the 180 degree that happened because I'm, um, well, was a very shy person. So mm. public speaking for me was like a nightmare. Like I <laughs> literally like sweat and anxiety yeah. and heart beating and everything. So um, so here you see with the color guide, as I like how I explained the primary psychology colors, yeah. um, it, it gave you a guide that, okay, now you're going to have this situation. This is the color you use. So I knew that I had a tool that will make me comfortable. So every mm. time I had to talk, and of course, the audience that I was talking to, also I had to assess what I'm wearing. Yeah. So when whenever I had to talk, and you notice in all my videos, even my workshop, I'm wearing blue because that mm. calms me down. It gives me the confidence. At the same time, people are feeling that energy. So they're reacting to me that I'm an expert in my field, they are focusing in what I am saying. Mm -hmm. So this process of using it every time made me very comfortable with public speaking. And of course, the more you do it and the more, and and one thing is important to know when it comes to public speaking is you have to know your information very well. Yes. And it's not about memorizing. It's not about things, the more real, the um, sort of correlation of examples that you give yes the better and more credible actually you sound yeah because a lot of people when they do like presentations um some of them will will be so focused about one element or f- so focused about like the wording or some people are so focused about how the presentation yes. looks that they're so in their mind yes. they forget to focus you know, so this is what the blue does for you. It helps yeah. you focus and it kind of calms your nerves down. Yeah. So that's that's my tool always for public speaking. I, I remember because when we were doing the presentation, you said, you have to wear blue. And I was like, I don't think if I have blue, Fatma. And I was like, then I went through my wardrobe and I went through every little thing. And I was like, I actually have a lot of blue. And I, I actually, because of you, find a love for blue again because I wasn't really using it I wasn't it, you know there's certain colors that you love and you kind of they're your go-to and I was like but my blue and I, I, I looked into my actually I had a lot of blue <laughs> and you don't realize do you and then I realized that also I went back in time and thinking that my school uniform at boarding school uh was blue was like this dark heavy blue and that's why I didn't like it I didn't I stayed away from blue even my other school uh, that was a, a green and so how colors influence even from childhood and 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 blocking that 
in in your adulthood because you can actually use it for your advantage and it's like and like you said understanding who we are and what we're meant to do help our communication help our audience understand and convey the message properly otherwise it does get lost business how can we use colors in our business and what was the biggest tip that you would give us well in business it's extremely important even more than your personal how you use color because the color is basically speaking uh, about your business or your brand Mm. so that's why like the logo is very important that it represents what you're doing so here's what when we do the corporate consultation and we look at a brand's identity whether it is branding or whether it is starting from scratch Mm. I always say you look at uh, the the brand or the business as a person give me characteristics so yes. for example like somebody will give me that okay my brand stands for um, being creative not conformist um, believing in, in in supporting the society um, you know a very uh, socially conscious about sustainability so a lot of what they are saying is characteristics of a particular group. So mm-hmm. now, like, for example, what I've described would be a firelight personality. You right. Know? So this is when we take the color group of the firelight personality and use those colors for the brand. Mm-hmm. Then within that, of course, you have the shapes, you have the textures, you, you even have the mindset of that color group. So, for example, they create a product that would be very autumn color. Mm -hmm. And how would they use the campaign? The campaign would have to emphasize a lot how um, it's sustainable and it's giving back to the community. And they attract people that are like-minded. So they'll understand the brand, you see? So that's how you speak to this sort of color group. And this is how you sell your product. When I was working with you, and I've done this before, but you have your own format and how you, um, you've broken down into four categories. Do you want to slightly just give it an example of these four categories that people can fall in? Not going with so much detail, but just if you can highlight those four categories um, and so people are aware of those four groups. Four groups, yes. So, um, so the foundation, first of all, the color effects theory, it's the effect of the individual color on our mood and behavior and then the effect of a group of colors. So an individual will be attracted to one or two of the groups because uh, each one of us have a a main and a subordinate personality. Yes. So uh, we're influenced by this. And this is where like many people say, oh, but you know, I was in the mood for this color for this phase in my life. And then I was in the mood because you're switching Mm. between your personalities. So the personalities are divided into four. Each group uh, sort of is as a source, comes from a region and its characteristics and colors. Mm -hmm. And then uh, here's where like you have the features, you have the personality, you have the colors that reflect on their skin tone um, nicely. So this is how it is. So like the one that I just described, the firelight personality would be your extrovert, your traveler, your humanitarian. Then, for example, a morning light personality, which is very fun and spring colors, Mm -hmm. um, this would be more a youth, they're youthful inside. Actually, they never grow old because they're so youthful inside. And and their personality, they are extroverts, creative, uh, very connected with nature. They're good with children, um, you know, but very sensitive. Then you go into your dream light personality. These people are softer features. Their voices are softer. They're the diplomats because they're very careful in analyzing the environment, mm-hmm. speaking the right thing. They're very artistic. So a lot of fashion designers are dream light personality because they have to work with their hands. So they're yeah. musicians, artists, so forth. And then finally, you have the starlight, which are very solid and strong colors. And actually, the only color group that has black in them, the other Mm. three don't. And uh, this personality is our leaders. So so they are very focused, very career focused. Even their space is extremely organized. They don't like color. So they just go for black and white. 
geometric prints. Um, and then they are, because they're so focused about work, they're not very communicative socially. They right, take yeah. time in communicating or getting close to someone because they expect people to trust them and that know that they are the experts. And they are. That's why there are world leaders or CEOs. A lot of yes. them have that. So here, as I'm saying this, I'm sure the listeners, each one must They'll be probably like, resonate with something. Well, I'm this, I'm this. Yeah, or I'm that, exactly. <laughs> yeah. so, so here's where you come to get analyzed properly Absolutely. to know exactly uh, what you are and which person, color personality you use for your field of work. Yeah, absolutely. So I, just like an example of a combination. I'm a fire light and a dream light, but my work is all firelight. So mm. that's why my logo is firelight. The way I do my campaigns are very much firelight personality. But now this is interesting. My The way we have transitioned into education. Yes, um, yes. Uh, you know, it, which is more toned down, more, mm. you know, a, a slower pace of work. Uh, if you notice, we just rebranded. You ran, yes, exactly. Yes. Fatma just rebranded her uh, her company and her logo and I was looking at it it's fabulous but I love it it's yeah nice. so now yeah. if you see it's softer colors but it's yes. representing education yes. representing more of a clinical coaching you know so yes. this is where now my my other personality is going to come into my work and do you find that uh the west and the middle east has a, a completely different palette like is there a by region or country or continent do you feel that there's a, a, a different group of people that you can identify straight away oh yes definitely and also naturally as i said unconsciously uh we're very much attracted to our own groups so yes. and also one interesting point you had made about like your uniform that is considered color symbolism so color mm -hmm. symbolism um, is not necessarily the actual meaning or emotion that you're having towards the color. It's outside influence, whether it is culture, personal experience, religion. Mm -hmm. So when this point that you're making is that, you know, is it by, by region? Yes, it is. Because mm -hmm. um, I would say 50% is what they're naturally, instinctively attracted to. And 50% has to do with their culture, their environment. Right. and what they constantly see so if you okay. notice interestingly in uae yes. we love like earth tones if you notice we love the beige and yes. the brown and yes. that's because our environment had a lot of that color glow mm. growing up. Yes. yes you see mm. um and now also like in france you notice that their fashion their interior it's all very light colors yes you know yes. And, the and they are yeah. representative of a dream light personality Yes. you know and and a lot of the colors they wear are very dream like personality mm. so it is definitely influenced by the region so i love using color because we've both studied uh, color analysis but i love using color to create relationships you know really create communication let's give it a tip to our audience about creating personal relationships so say if they're or they're, they're back on dating. So how okay. would we, how can we help uh, our audience understand color in, in creating quality relationships? Okay, this is interesting because they are three colors for love, okay? And yes. each one uh, kind of builds the relationship in a certain way. Mm. So uh, so the, the color green, which not people expect for it to be the color of love, is a, the universal color of love. Wonderful. Okay, so here the relationship that you will be building using the green mm -hmm. while you're communicating in this relationship um, is that you are giving a sense of, as we said, uh, an open love. So mm -hmm. there's a safe place to be around this person. You're also giving them a sense of reassurance, you know? So right. this is where you the green would come. So it's good to use it like at the beginning of the relationship where you're mm -hmm. building this up. Right, you know, okay. Maybe. Uh, then you go into the emotional side, which is the color pink, because mm -hmm. the color pink is also the, the color of like human survival. Right. So 
automatically your body goes to that color when you're trying to emotionally heal mm. you know so here is a good second stage where you're emotionally connecting uh with the person also right. very good on first dates so okay if you have the wrong idea you can wear pink you're safe <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's great. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great boost for them for the first yeah. date. And it goes for male and female, by the way. And, and yeah. men who wear pink are very confident uh, and comfortable with their masculinity. It shows the confidence, absolutely. Yeah, the confidence. Then, uh, I mean, red. Red is considered, as I said, because it's more of a physical, uh, you know, expression. Yes. Uh, so this is where like red would come in much later. Um, but in terms of these are the three key colors when it comes to building relationship, building communication. Then, of course, when you go much deeper into a long-term relationship, here's when you pick your colors to talk about different arguments or discussions. <laughs> <laughs> so this is such all, a great point. <laughs> yes, for, so for all the whether relationship or marriage, you're discussing your other halves and they're not in the mood to listen, wear your blue and get their attention. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got to wear blue when we want them to focus and yeah. give them a bit of pink and a, a bit of green and a bit of red in, in combined. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a great point. Is, uh, regarding colors, is there a trend that is happening? Well, what I've noticed is that a lot of people are going into solids, as you said, because they're sustainable. Mm. Not a lot of people are going towards big prints like before. Right. Um, another thing is definitely the oversized fashion is going to stay because mm -hmm. as you said people don't want to spend yes. um, more than they have to so i'm noticing that they're going for more practical long-term garments yes. than having something that's on trend um or you know kind uh, of classic pieces yeah. Classic, yeah exactly this is where i see it definitely going uh, valentino had their uh, fashion show yesterday and i was just watching some clips and this is bright fuchsia color which is fantastic again a, a solid complete, solid yeah. yeah it was a solid color as well so. is there any style icon that you looked up to when you were growing up and you were like you know that influenced your style Oh, well, well, as growing up, my, my fashion icon was my mother's. Honestly, yeah. she was the most sh chic. Like I would just like sit in, in her room and just watch her style herself. So she was oh. fantastic. So that's my first style, uh, style icon. My second yes. style icon was Audrey Hepburn. Yes. I used to <laughs> love her style. Uh, she was so elegant and, and she did have like for that time, she had her own creative twist. Absolutely. Yeah. Look. yeah. But yet it was elegant. But now it's uh, Olivia Palermo has been my style icon for like uh, forever. And what is it that you like about her style? Well, number one, that her palette is very much like my like, palette. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's actually, it's quite style. a good point, isn't it? That when yeah. you find someone that is a, uh, um, maybe a, a personality, you know, someone in the, in the limelight, that you could actually identify straight away uh, what, what their palette is and it complements yours. Yes. And, um, and another thing is, as I said, because my style is, um, I like to be creative with my prints, yeah. Uh, a combination of accessory, but I'm very classic in my, yes. in my way. So this is what I love about her style. Yeah, no, she is, she is fantastic. And she's such a, and she's gone into more business as well now. So her, her, yes. uh, her um, start of reality TV and being an entrepreneur and she's moved into business. So she ev she's even transitioned, um, yeah. probably like this, like you have. Isn't it? Let's you talk know? about the color effects theory because that was quite fascinating. And that is a, a real theory and a real science. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yes, so yes, it's completely science because you see how we process color um, is basically we need light to see color. Mm -hmm. So once the light hits our eyes, there's the rods and cones that filter the color, for example, you're exposed to. Once they have identified what it is, a message is sent to the brain. The brain sends you a message that you're supposed to have this emotion. You see? So this is how we process it in our mind. Mm -hmm. The second half is the wavelength that, as we discussed, so yes. each, the, the, the darker the color, the higher the wavelength, the lighter, the lower. 
So this is where you feel the, you know, like sometimes you wear a certain color and you actually feel hot, you know, mm. even though maybe it's not a very dark color. So here's where we are very sensitive to the vibration of each of these colors and yes. how it's making us feel. Then the third uh, part of the theory is that the influence or reaction of individual, the regions, their characteristics to these group of colors. So the foundation of how Angela actually started this was her family owned a bed and breakfast in the UK. And uh, there was one particular room that was a dark color mm -hmm. that she noticed people wouldn't stay for long in, you know, or wouldn't book, or the regulars that would come in wouldn't book that room. So she right. actually just asked one or two that, what is it about this room that you don't like? So mm. every single one of them said the color. Right, okay. And, uh, and, and she just randomly picked another lighter color, changed the place. Within two, three days, that room was booked and then it, people were regularly booking it. So that's when she got like fascinated into the world of, of science of color. Yes. And she went on to study in the US because I told you that's the foundation of where color psychology was. And um, here in the process, she started, um, number one, of course, doing a lot of tests with different colors and seeing the reaction of people. The second, she started um, sort of combining how to divide them into four into different sectors. So she saw social patterns over decades. Um, also, when it came to philosophy, um, if you think of it, everything or different science has always been dividing humans into four different categories mm. or four different elements. So yes. there was always that factor there. Yes. That's and the where seasons. Started, yeah. Yes. So you have like seasons. So everything was like four different groups. So that's how she divided the four different groups. And then, of course, she combined the wavelengths of these different groups and put each wavelength separately together and saw how these people were reacting to it. Mm. So that is the science behind the color effects theory. For me, I, I think color is some, the first thing that you see about someone. You know, it, it's the first thing that attracts what message you're trying to portray and what you want to say in the world. It really does speak your style, doesn't it? Yes, for sure. Like, yeah. um, Honestly, even when like people be before used to meet me because I was very bold with my colors. So a lot of my friends actually tell me, oh, you know, the first time I met you, the first thing I noticed how beautiful the colors you had worn. And this was way before I was into, you know, studying into colors. So uh -huh. it does leave an expression, you know, like yes. that's your, your way of expressing your yes. personality. I think not only does it uh, introduce you but I think it also leaves like a, a, a lasting effect, which you you want on any social occasion, or you want to be remembered. How do you see your con color consultancy in the UAE and with your education? How do you feel in five years time? I see it honestly, which has already actually started on the lifestyle sector. Um, I I am definitely going more into um, uh, therapy. So I've also now certified as an NLP coach mm, wonderful. Um, for personal and for executive. So right. I see uh, the company going towards education, going towards training, going towards therapy, uh, all with the foundation of using color psychology and therapy. Uh, what advice would you give to women um, when it comes to styling and fashion and, and colors? What's a, a great tip that you can leave our um, audience with well definitely you have everything in your closet so, you <laughs> so once you do a color session you find out that a lot of the things that uh, colors that match your personality and also styles that is truly you is, is in your closet but you have to know how to wear it and how to combine it to make it where it represents your personality so the, the tip I would say is number one, color coordinate your closet. So here, uh, place everything with, with particular colors together. And this is where you will find out which colors are missing in your wardrobe that you need to shop for. Okay. Right. And which you are actually excessively buying that maybe you're not even wearing. 
So here's like sort of a, a closet edit. Then yes. when you go into shopping for yourself, um, as I said, once you have your color guide through your color session, uh, then you know exactly what to get uh, when it comes to jewelry, accessories, uh, even in terms of bags and style and shoes and how to make uh, actually color combinations. Here, I, I have a whole sector in my course about how to use the color wheel, how to do different combinations. And not many people actually are aware of uh, that part of color psychology and how to combine these things. Yes, absolutely. And I think was half your wardrobe is not used and then you'll buy something, you'll think, oh, I'll, I'll use that, but you never end up wearing it. And I wearing. think during this time as well, you know, people can't afford to go, well, they're not going out, so not buying many things, but they are repurposing their outfits, exactly. which is so amazing. And so exactly. they're really like, again, using that creativity and, and changing it all around, which I love because they're really, you know, that it's, it's about being sustainable, isn't it? Again, exactly. This is this yeah. is actually what I love about this period of time and that all of us have basically become very sustainable yes. with, with our shopping. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, so soon actually i am launching my my clothing line oh uh, wonderful that, Fatma. <laughs> secret, and that's basically going to be uh fixing the problem you just sent about yeah. sustainability and fashion and oh fantastic i am really looking forward to that now when are you thinking of launching when are you launch uh, that? it will be end of the summer end of the okay summer. All right, but, end of the uh, summer. But Fantastic. You'll be the first to, to know when we launch it. Uh, absolutely. And let me know. Fatma, thank you so much. It was so nice to connect with you after such a long time. Four years yes. passed so quickly. This, this was an amazing catch up, honestly. It didn't, it didn't feel like an interview. Wish you all the best for the future. I really do. And please come and see us in London and, uh, you know, and uh, inform us of your new brand and whenever, whatever you're doing, all the wonderful things. Lots okay. of love. Take thank care. You. Take, Take care, care honey. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.